German Americans by Tolzman, copyright 2000, continued. Talking about the first German settlers who moved out west. So, yeah. Hunter S. Thompson also talks about the misfits and the dreamers and the round holes and square pegs and the uh, the lovers and the warriors and the rebels and the rabble rousers and the unique uh, individuals in America. So we come from a long history of revolutionary uh, folks and people. Uh, while we only had one revolution, we had a lot of innovators and inventors, and we have had uh, revolution lights, I guess, uh, light revolutions or small revolutions in forms of constitution changes and uh, change of, in leadership, uh, peaceful exchange of power and leadership. So, Carrying on, the Ohio Valley, Kentucky occupied a key position with regard to the settlement of the Midwest. As the pioneers entered by the way of the Ohio River and from the early settlements in Kentucky and Tennessee. Daniel Boone, a famous Kentuckian, was born in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and he spoke the German dialect of that area. So he had been claimed as a Pennsylvania uh, German, although he was actually of English descent. At age 18, he went to North Carolina, where he lived as a farmer and hunter. Daniel Boone, had, he knew German. He knew a German dialect. So Daniel Boone knew a lot of uh, Indian languages and English and German. So he was a very uh, cultured person, had many, uh, could speak with many tongues which is good for communication and being able to discuss and talk to many different people, not just uh, uh, one body of folks, of people, English-speaking people. Uh, especially since ain't number one language, Spanish and Mandarin are, uh, have more speakers. So, all right. Um, in 1769, together with several frontiersmen, Boone went on an exploration through the forest between the Tennessee in the Ohio and Cumberland Rivers. Uh, after two years, he returned with his wife, children, and relatives and five other families, only, only to be driven back by Indians to the Clinch River. In 1775, he brought his family to a stockade on the Kentucky River called Boonesboro. A number of other fortified settlements were established, and since the Indians were hostile, uh, a number of other fortified settlements were established since uh, Indians were hostile. Um, which, of course, they would be since their land is being stolen from them. So, uh, even before Daniel Boone, a schoolmate of his by the name of Steiner and a companion, Herod, had gone as far as the present site of Nashville, there were some 40 people, including a number of Germans, who founded Harrodsburg in 1774, the earliest settlement in Kentucky. So, Germans were there at Jamestown, Germans were there in Harrodsburg, Germans are an integral part of Kentucky history and American history, Louisville history. So uh, Germans accompanied Boone, Daniel Boone, on his expeditions, and German names can be found in such settlements as Bear Grass Creek, Hart Station, and Lawrenceburg. The Lincoln family, like the Boones, migrated from Pennsylvania into Kentucky, the Abraham Lincoln family, and then further west. This was a pattern that many Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia Germans took, as well as settlers of other backgrounds. Pennsylvania is where William Justice Goble came from, uh, from Pennsylvania to uh, Covington when he was a, a young man, uh, a boy. Many of these settlers lived in or near American settlements and absorbed German influences. Abraham Lincoln's grandfather, for example, spelled his name in the German way as Linkhorn because he lived in a region settled predominantly by Virginia Germans. Indeed, his grandfather's tombstone in Long Run Cemetery near Louisville, Kentucky, bears the name Abraham Linkhorn. So, uh, Abraham Lincoln's grandfather spelled his name the German way, Linkhorn. And his grandfather's tombstone in Long Run Cemetery near Louisville bears the name Abraham Linkhorn. The question often arose as to whether or not he was of German descent. Although he was not, 
the orthography, his name reflects the influence of German heritage. So Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> so Daniel Boone and Abraham Lincoln had German influence, which are pillars in German, uh, in American history and Kentucky history. Abraham Lincoln, born here, Daniel Boone, um, made his mark, you know, as a frontier settler in Kentucky. So, a typical frontsman, frontiersman was Henry Christ, or Heinrich Christ, born in 1764 in Virginia of German parents. In 1788, he set forth on a flat bottom boat on the Ohio River for the purpose of preparing salt. Uh, there were 12 armed men and one woman in the company arriving in the Salt River. They were attacked by Indians. The lone woman was captured by the Indians but was later exchanged, and all the men were killed except Crest. He was so severely wounded, though, and he could not walk, crawling on his knees with his clothes and skin torn by briars and thorns. Crest was found and carried to the Salt Camp. It took him a year to recover from his wounds. Later, he became prominent in politics and was elected to the state legislature and afterwards to Congress. Despite his hard frontier life, he lived to be 80. Some Germans were trappers and hunters, but the great majority of them were farmers. They cultivated the land, built up towns, and took an interest in religion and education. The first college in the Ohio Valley, Transylvania Seminary, actually the first institution of higher learning west of the Alleghenies, received its four, first charter in 1780. Transylvania University, the first college west of the Alleghenies, the Appalachian Mountains, the first ones, I don't, I don't know why, maybe the Alleghenies and Appalachians are different. I feel like the whole Appalachian chain is Appalachia and that Alleghenies, uh, whatever. But the first one out west, the first one past the, the original 13 colonies, Transylvania University. By 1792, it was located in Lexington. In 1798, it was renamed Transylvania University. Among its first trustees were John Bowman, or Bauman, B-A-U-M-A-N-N, -N, George Muter, and Jacob Frommen, all of German origin. Among the pioneers were also several German Jews who made important contributions. Joseph Simon set up a shop in Lancaster, Pennsylvania before 1740, supplying the backwoodsmen with many necessities. He soon became one of the foremost Indian traders of the time. His boats went down the Ohio River, and his pack trains went across the plains as one of the largest landholders in the Midwest. He became vitally interested in the promotion of settlements. The brothers Barnard and Michael Gratz, uh, there's a Gratz in Owen County from... Uh, Langendorf, Silesia, engaged in the import trade after having received a business education in the firm of their uncle, Solomon Henry. Their vessels plied from Mobile to Halifax. Later, they became interested in the Virginia Western Movement and in the attempts at reorganizing the settlements along the Ohio and Mississippi Rivers. They supplied the settlers with provisions and traded for furs with the Indians. Benjamin Gratz, the son of Michael, became a trustee and patron of Transylvania University. He was also one of the promoters, the director, and second president of the first railroad west of the Alleghenies, the Lexington and Ohio Railroad. So Benjamin Gratz, um, a railroader, uh, one of the, a, a trustee of Transylvania. So the, the Transylvania has lots of German influence. Uh, Germans continued to spread into all the settlements of Kentucky, as the name implies. Frankfurt was settled by for, former residents of Frankfurt on Main. Frankfurt am Main, which is a city in uh, Germany. So Frankfurt, Kentucky. Frankfurt, Kentucky was settled by former residents of Frankfurt am Main. It was noted for its Gemütlichkeit, <laughs> which is a German word for good-natured disposition. G-E-M-U-T-L-I-C-H-K-E-I-T. Gemütlichkeit. Gemütlichkeit. Gemütlichkeit good natured disposition and had bars with billiard tables and a theater. However, the attempt to establish a library uh, met with failure. The central and western part of the bluegrass region was also settled by German farmers. The favorable reports of the fertile, fertile soil attracted many German settlers from North Carolina and Virginia. Many Maryland and Pennsylvania Germans also moved into Kentucky. The wave of immigration increased with the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, after which a greater number of settlers entered Tennessee as well as Kentucky. The territory north of the Ohio River was not settled as early as Kentucky and Tennessee, and it was inaccessible uh, and, and inhabited. 
by unfriendly Indian tribes. The first two Germans to come to the Ohio country were Conrad Weiser and Christian Post, who were both well acquainted with the Indians. Weiser was the son of the leader of the Palatines, Johann Conrad Weiser, and Post was a Moravian missionary. Moravian. Moravian. I don't know. I guess that might be German. But uh, Weiser had not only learned the Mohawk language, um, so just like Daniel Boone, he's learning uh, languages of the Native Americans who were genocided by the uh, 1492 uh, immigrants. So I guess Germans were here, even though my direct lineage started in 1869. Um, the, the, there were Germans in Jamestown, so... So Germans were there from the beginning, I guess, of the European migration. Anyways. <laughs> um, the central and western part of the bluegrass region was also settled by German farmers. Central and western part, the central and western part of bluegrass region. The bluegrass region, which is uh, in the northern part. Uh, the central and western parts, so that would be Lexington and Louisville. The fair report reports of the fertile soil attracted many German settlers from North Carolina and uh, Virginia. Many Maryland and Pennsylvania Germans also moved into Kentucky. The wave of immigration increased with the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, after which a number of settlers... Yeah, I read that before, but it's still good stuff. You know, western, central and western part of the bluegrass were settled by German farmers. Uh, Weiser not only learned the Mohawk language and several dialects, but he also won the confidence of the Indians. Conrad Weiser. For this, Conrad Weiser uh, also was invaluable as an interpreter and an intermediary. In 1737, he undertook a journey to Onondaga in New York at the request of the governors of Pennsylvania and Virginia. He wanted to persuade the chiefs of the Six Nations to make an alliance with the Cherokees and the Cotawabas. His mission was successful. In 1742, Weiser was the interpreter for Governor Thomas of Pennsylvania at a parlay with the chiefs of the Six Nations. Weiser was again sent to him in 1745 as an emissary. This time, at the behest of Governor Clinton of New York, he managed to regain their friendship. Three years later, he was asked to travel to Ohio. This time, he wanted to keep the Indians from an alliance with the French. During this trip, he noted the location and strength of the French settlements in the Ohio Valley. Successful at his task, Weiser was able to persuade the Mohawk Indians to form an alliance against the French and the hostile Indian tribes of the Ohio region in 1745. Weiser died as a lieutenant during the French and Indian War. Christian Post had married an Indian woman and so maintained very friendly relations with the Indians. This was not approved of, however, by the Bethlehem Church Fathers, and Post was no longer permitted to serve as an ordained missionary. Nevertheless, he continued his work independently. In 1761, he became the first settler in the Ohio district in what was now Stark County. Hopeful of founding a mission for the Indians, Post included Johann Heckelwelder to join him, and induced Johann Heckelwelder. To join him. This is Christian Post. The young man first learned the Indian language and gave instruction to Indian children. Christian Post began to cultivate the land and preach to the Indians. This attempt to found a settlement in 1761 failed because of the outbreak of Pontiac's war. Chief Pontiac was a daring and clever leader. He aroused the Indians and led them so successfully that all the western frontier forts except Detroit fell into his hands. However, another Moravian, David, David Zeisberger, was more successful and found an Indian congregation on the Allegheny River. Um, the Allegheny River at Go Shocking. By 1770, the congregation had grown and Zeisberger moved from uh, Friedendorf and Schoenbrunn. To help the Indians, Zeisberger even prepared a book of the Delaware language, which was published in Philadelphia in 1821. The Moravians established viable communities together with the Indians, but suddenly, at the instigation of British agents, the Wyandot, the Wyandot Indians were induced in 1781 to fall upon and destroy the settlements. The Christianized Indians were entirely unprepared for the murderous attack, for they had been taught, taught nonviolence. The peaceful Indians were first driven from their settlements by the Wyandots under the leadership of the renegade Simon Gurdy. When they returned, they were barbarously massacred by a group of volunteers under the command of Colonel David Williamson in 17, uh, 1782. During the Indian Wars, a number of Germans acquired fame as scouts and Indian fighters. The most famous of these was Ludwig Louis Wetzel. His father was born in the 
Palatinate and had settled near Wheeling. One day while he was out hunting and his sons Jacob and Louis, they were attacked by Indians. Louis, who was then only 13, managed to escape with his brother, but his father was killed and scalped. Both boys swore that they would kill every Indian they laid their eyes on. Um... So Simon Gurdy uh, crossed paths with the Indians uh, at, the, at the Moravians, uh, the Moravian settlements. So German American, uh, the German American Experience by Don Heinrich Tolsman. Number three, and carrying on.